Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway, founder of the Tudor Society and Amberlynn Files, and also author of several Tudor history books, uh, including this one, which is the inspiration for this series. Now, today's On This Day... Uh, we actually haven't got any really juicy events. I mean, I'm showing you that there's not sort of many details about them because they're not really juicy events that I can tell you lots about. So today I'm going to look at a man who uh, we don't actually um, hear his name come up uh, very much. He's not talked about very much he's not really important he's not one of those juicy interesting characters of Tudor history but today is his birthday on this day in Tudor history the 5th of February 1537 diplomat Sir Henry Brooke was born now his father was George Brooke um, 9th Baron Cobham who you might remember me mentioning a few days ago I think was it the 30th of January I mentioned him. Um, I mentioned him because his property Cooling Castle in Kent was besieged by the rebels of Wyatt's Rebellion in January 1554. So we had George Brooke, uh, Baron Cobham, uh, Henry Brooke's father being mentioned a few days ago. Now Sir Henry Brooke's mother was Anne Bray, that's her maiden name. Um, she was a woman who'd served Queen Anne Boleyn as one of her ladies. We know from records that she'd served um, the Queen as an attendant horsewoman at Anne's coronation on the 1st of June 1533. Now there is controversy surrounding Anne Bray, Henry Brooke's mother, because um, we don't know whether she's the Nan Cobham, because that was the, the barony of the, um, of the family. Um, she would have been called, known as Anne Bray, Anne Brooke, Anne Cobham. We don't know whether she's the Nan Cobham, who Sir John Hussey names um, in a letter that he wrote in 1536. As one, as, as one of Queen Anne Boleyn's accusers in 1536 at Anne Boleyn's fall, when he wrote, The Lady Worcester and Nan Cobham and one maid more. So he named those three women as providing evidence um, to the Crown um, at the fall of Anne Boleyn in 1536. So we're not entirely sure. Now, going back to Sir Henry Brooke, because he is the birthday boy, or Henry Cobham, as he was more commonly known, he was the couple's fifth surviving son. They did have more sons, but not all of them survived childhood. And one of ten children. It always makes me flinch and wince when I read of uh, these huge families. He was educated at Trinity College, Cambridge, although he never graduated with a degree. Uh, following his education there, he joined the household of Edward Courtenay, the Earl of Devon. Now, his biographer, Julian Locke, notes that um, it was while um, Cobham Henry, Cobham Henry Brooke, was in the Earl of Devon's household that he was noticed by Elizabeth, the future Queen Elizabeth I, and was described as coming to her liking. So she noticed him, perhaps she thought he had potential. There was something about him that Elizabeth liked. And shortly after Elizabeth became queen, um, Henry Cobham was made a gentleman pensioner. And in 1561, so just a few years after Elizabeth uh, came to the throne, she came to the throne in November 1558, um, Cobham began his diplomatic career he accompanied Sir Thomas Chaloner on a diplomatic mission to Spain. We then know that Cobham uh, carried out a number of embassies for Queen Elizabeth. He went to the Low Countries, he went to France, and in October 1579, Elizabeth appointed him as her resident ambassador to the French court. He remained in that position in France until he was recalled and replaced by Sir Edward Stafford in 1583. Now, Cobham was also a justice for the peace, 
and a deputy lieutenant for his home county of Kent. Um, he was very active in Kent in those positions as acting against Catholic recusants. Um, you know, obviously it wasn't a good time to be a Catholic um, in the Protestant Elizabeth I's reign. And so he, he was, he, him being Protestant, he was active in sort of prosecuting, perhaps persecuting Catholics in his area. And in the late 1580s, um, he became a Knight of the Shire, and that saw him uh, being, you know, a member of Parliament. And in Parliament, we know that Cobham was one of those who petitioned the Queen and her Privy Council to have Mary, Queen of Scots, executed, to deal with the problem of the Scottish Queen once and for all to get her executed. Um, Cobham died um, on the 13th of January 1592, so not a bad life, 1537 to 1592, at his home in Kent, Sutton at Hone, I think it's pronounced. That was the residence that his wife, Anne Sutton, had brought to their marriage. Unfortunately, he died heavily in debt. Um, so a sad end to a man who'd uh, served his queen sort of loyally and well. He and his wife had three sons and two daughters. So I just wanted to look at one of these kind of the unknown kind of men of the Tudor period. He's not someone we get to hear about at all, Henry Cobham or Sir Henry Brooke. So he was born on this day in history, the 5th of February, 1537. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying these uh, On This Day in Tudor History uh, videos. I'll be back tomorrow with another one. You can subscribe with this button and you can also hit the bell as well. I think there's a bell button to be uh, notified as videos go live so that you never miss out on any. Thank you for all the comments that you're leaving. It's great to get uh, feedback and to talk Tudor. Any excuse to talk Tudor, I love. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.